Hi, and welcome back to A Better Place. This is season five, and in this season, we will continue to bring you educative programming on education and, of course, on youth affairs and family life. Today, we have a special guest in the studios. Stay tuned as we will be right back. Man, I'm supposed to take my girl out to dinner this weekend. I'm so broke, man. Man, I used to have those same problems, you know. But, but since I got my whip company in your card, when I take my lady out, I even get something back, you know. Get something back? But you're a lucky fella? I took your mind out the gutter, man. What I mean is, with whip company on, I get back 1% on every purchase I make. With this card, I can spend in Gillers and use it throughout the Netherlands and Tiddies. Instead of paying 1% of the dollar credit card, man, I get 1% back on every purchase I make at the end of the year. What? I gotta get myself a company on card. Man, but let's go. No, let me go. Man, now my lady's birthday gonna be a real celebration. <laughs> At least now with Web Compaleon, I know you're gonna get something back. <laughs> <laughs> the Web Compaleon credit card, with limits as low as 500 guilders. You don't have to walk with cash, and it is accepted by practically all businesses. The Web Compaleon is the first guilder credit card that can be afforded by anyone. Hi and welcome back to A Better Place. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is season five of A Better Place. Today in the studios, we have a longtime educator and a friend, Miss Oldine Bryson Pontiflet. Oldine, welcome to A Better Place. Thank you for having me, Angelique. Oldine, as I said before, today um, we're going to be discussing education on St. Martin. And everyone know you, you're well known in St. Martin for education because you've Taught, you've been principals, you've been the director of public education. You have really done your part for education on St. Martin. So I want to welcome you to a better place, and I want us to delve right into the topic of education. But before we do that, just tell the viewing audience, those who don't know you, who Oldine Bryson Pontiflet is. You said I'm an educator. I'm also um, a wife for many years, a mother of two, and a grand mother of one. I think that's my life. I have <laughs> brothers and sisters and my nieces, nephews. We are, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a family person and uh, very much involved with my family. That's okay. the other part of me besides being an educator. educator. I think family is very, very important to me. Okay. So how long have you been in education? Over 40 years. Over 40 Over years. Over 40 years. So can I easily say that you started in your early 20s? Yes, I did. Did you start um, teaching in the Netherlands or did you start in St. Martin? I started in the Netherlands. I taught there for seven years at the, at the primary school. It was a very good experience. It was a new school. It was a temporary school. And in Holland in those days, they would build the permanent schools out of uh, concrete or brick and the, uh, the, the temporary school out of um, like shit rock kind of thing. And our school was a temporary school and it turned out to be one of the best schools in the village where I lived in Eithoren. And I have still have very fond memory, memories and still have contact with some of my students from that period. So, And then I moved on to New York where I worked as a secretary in an office and also worked for Berlitz School for Languages. That's an experience that I'm now also using in my, in my private life. And uh, then I came to St. Martin, and I always I came back, although I wasn't born here, but I was brought up to be St. Martin. When my, our parents talked about home, they meant St. Martin. So in my mind, I was always from St. Martin, a St. Martin. And, uh, and um, I came here, and all my brothers and sisters came here, except two. Uh, they stayed in the States. And I started teaching at the uh, then John Lamini School. I worked there for five years. 
Then I went to Milton Peters College and I taught there for six. Then I became director for 15 years, the longest position I ever held, too long. <laughs> and um, then I went on to public education for four years. Then I retired from formal education and now um, I do private lessons in Dutch language. Okay. So, Olin, a lot has been said about education on St. Martin, and, and most of the times when we talk about education, we often hear negative stuff being said about the educational system on St. Martin. What um, can you say about that? Um, education on St. Martin is going through trying times like all over in the world. We seem to think that we are only going through it. It's not true. The society has changed so rapidly and education has not been able to keep up with the changes in society. That creates a problem. And to f zone in on St. Martin, I think that our main problem is that we, first if I look at, we look at buildings, we look at, we have to have this to teach, we have to have that, everything has to be in place, we need uh, 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 overhead, we need all the modern technology to teach. Well, if you cannot teach with the basic things in your classroom, they can put any kind of technological um, thing in your class, you are not going to be able to teach. I say if you can't teach under a tree, you can't teach. Because teaching is being creative, knowing what to do with what you have and to seek other means. That's on St. Martin is a bit out of touch. We want to have everything, but still we're not seeing any improvement in our results. Secondly, the main cause, I think, of education is that um, our teachers, it's the only profession where you are not held accountable for your results. If you order a chair from a carpenter and that chair is broken when you buy it or it breaks when you sit on it, you want your money back. And yet we hear that in school, children are not working, this is not happening, and and you have three quarter or a half of your class is failing and you the only thing we hear is parents are not cooperating and the children are out of out of work and that doesn't gel with me it is not right you have to be held accountable accountability forces you to be creative forces you to really if it is so that you can come up with hard proof that you have done everything to see that your children are successful um, Teaching on St. Martin is not, um, for a long time on St. Martin, we did not have any upgrading. So when the upgrading started, it was an impact on everybody's lives. But everywhere in the world, people complain here on St. Martin, but if they move to the States, they won't complain, but they're going to have to be more upgrading. We have to have upgrading. It should be in balance, though. It should be in balance. And that sometimes, I think, is a bit out of whack. Um, but... We always talk, only talk, always talk about the kids, and I said the only thing that changed, children are born, they grow up, they have nothing to say about their own life until they're about 12 or 13, when they can think for themselves when it's done. Mm -hmm. Who is the cause of all of, the, of, of things going awry with kids? It has to be us grown-ups, because they, they don't feed themselves, they don't buy their clothes, they, don't, uh, they, don't, they sleep in your house. So... We just let things go astray and then want to rein them in and say, the kids of today. But mm -hmm. we are responsible for the kids of today. And those are things that we have to, to look at. Mm -hmm. We're talking about teachers saying parents don't have to help. And that is my pet peeve when it comes to homework. Mm -hmm. um, everybody seems to think that homework is very important. Homework is important if it is given that the child can practice what he has been taught in, in class. school. Mm -hmm. Too often I notice that kids have homework and there was no explanation. Now, when you're going to give homework as a teacher, I say, you know what? Have this in mind. You're dealing with a mother, a single mother. She cannot speak English. If she can speak English, she can't read or write English. Because of the situation, she has to work two jobs. She herself did not finish elementary school. How in God's name do we expect that woman, and we have many of them, to help their child? What she has to do is to make sure that there's a little clean spot in the house where her child can sit down 
and put something on the table that his work does not get dirty and that it looks neat. She doesn't have to know what it is. It just has to look neat. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's what we should expect. But uh, 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 it is not fair to, to, to make, uh, to, to have parents believe that they are teachers. You are not your child's teacher. You are there to support. You are there to encourage. You are there to see to it that homework is done, that the child leaves home with something to eat if you have. And if you don't have, to let the teacher know that I, could, I, I don't have anything to eat for the child. Yeah. Because the child gets sleepy, gets annoyed, maybe takes somebody's sandwich, and he gets punished. But why did he take it? Well, Ms. Bryson, I know you have so much to share with us, but we have to take a break, and now we'll come right back to this discussion. Stay tuned. We will be right back. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, Saber, and Stacia, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Princess Juliana International Airport. International Airport. PJIA. An ultra-modern airport offering you a warm and efficient welcome from the breathtaking landing to the easy flow of passengers. PJIA has a spacious, clean, and traveler-friendly terminal with great food and excellent duty-free shopping. PJIA, a leader in Caribbean aviation with daily connections to all major Caribbean destinations and major cities within the USA, Canada, Europe, and Latin America. PJIA, your gateway to Hi, and welcome back to A Better Place. Ms. Bryson Pantaflet, you would see some kids come to school and they're probably not, they're in a foul mood or that they just don't seem like they want to work. And um, oftentimes, indeed, teachers would punish them or get annoyed. But I always had the method of speaking with the kids to find out exactly what was wrong. And indeed, what you're saying is true. Sometimes they would come to school and not have anything to eat. You know, some of the policies are that you cannot eat in class or you're not allowed to eat even outside. So they would not even be given the opportunity to get something to eat if they hadn't have had a meal. So um, I don't know how, um, well, I've been out of the classroom for two years now. So I don't know if much has changed where that is concerned. But how do you think we can come back? Um, issues like that of I can't imagine a teacher knowing that the child did not have any breakfast will think about not allowing the child to eat in the class or giving him a space where to eat I mean it to me is it then that person should not be in the classroom and that's what I really mean but you'll you'll hear teachers say but we have our rules and the rule states that you eat in break time in recess time I can't be, and nobody can learn on an empty head. It's a no-no. I would break that. I wouldn't have any problem breaking that rule as a teacher. I wouldn't have any problem breaking that rule as a teacher because the child is hungry. How are you going to teach a hungry child? It's not possible. You know, the child is not, you know, sometimes you want a little snack and the child will, you know, take a snack. Out. That's a different, but if he is hungry, even if the child, some of kids are on the road very early. Mm -hmm. So if they have breakfast 5.30 or quarter past five. By time eight o'clock, they're, they're feeling a little, and they have been active. They want to eat a little thing. What is wrong with having them have a, a snack? You don't want them to be really, when you're working, you know, sitting on eating, and they have one hand bread, and they're going to be working. Right. But you have, to, you have to manage your class so that everybody feels comfortable. Remember, uh, when I was in teacher's training college, we learned that that is a second bar. School is the second home of a child. A child should feel at home. A child should feel comfortable at home. And nowadays, where we see that our family lives are, have gone awry, that we have to realize how, that the role that school plays in the life of a child is more important. 
We only we focus on the academics, but the social development as a child has fallen practically on schools. And we have to acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge that is a change in society and not fight and force uh, things to happen in the home over which we have no control because it's about the children who are there. Some kids, they have to know the five hours I spend in school, at least those five hours are good hours, are hours where you get attention, where you get love, and where you feel at home. Because we don't know what these kids go to at home. Sometimes we know, and believe you me, when I was a principal, teenagers then came to my office, and when I really started to talk with them, I felt like the child because what they were experiencing, I've never, ever in my life experienced. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced. And, and they walk around acting big and, yeah. and, 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 you know, having a big, big mouth. But when they're in the office, they're the smallest child you've ever met, you know. And, and we have to really look and, 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 and don't refer to the past. We can't refer. It's a different ball game. You know, earlier you said something and you said that um, people tend to say, um, um, back in the day and when we were growing up and we were much different in this generation but I remember once um, when we were having a, a, a training for teachers and, the, and the, the trainer at the time she wrote on the board um, the children of today are so rude they put their feet on the chairs they misbehave they da 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 and all of the teachers were there sitting and going like that is so true that is so true and when she came back to the lesson she said, and who agrees with this? And all of the teachers were in agreement. And then she said to them, do you know from when this saying is? And it was something from way back in the 18th yeah, century. Yeah. You know, and it, it, the teachers were in awe because they were like, really? I thought you were talking about the children of today. So it really shows that nothing has really changed. Mm -mm. It's just that times change. And as we grow older, we tend to forget how we were as children or teenagers. And it's amazing how quickly we forget. Sometimes I look at... Uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm retired, so you, you know much. <laughs> but I speak to young people in their 40s and in their late 30s, and I sometimes say, how long ago were you a teenager? Mm -hmm. you, you can't imagine the things that they want to do. What they, what they didn't want their parents to do for them, to them, they're doing to their children. I find he should have this subject because it's important for him. I say, it's his life. Once your child is being positive, has is in good company and that's all you want that's all you want the rest will follow some kids have a rough time during puberty you just have to guide them because that too will pass mm -hmm. and you got to there are too many people out there waiting for our children to desert us mm -hmm. and what we are doing with our actions with our aggressiveness we are pushing our children to those people on the street and that is what we have to be careful with. Sometimes it is disappointing. Your child doesn't do exactly as what you say. But it all comes, it all rectifies itself. Once your child, I say, if your child is not in drugs, your child is not stealing, he doesn't have bad company, rest will come. So, um, so you would say that education on St. Martin is not as bad as people have it to be. Um, <laughs> no, it is not as bad, but there is, there is, there are so many things that, little things that we can improve on, um, that it's sometimes for me very frustrating because I've tried when I was in formal education and I don't understand. For instance, we were talking about FBE. Okay. Um, hold that thought about FBE <laughs> because you see our time is just flying by. Um, hold your thought. <laughs> Stay tuned. We will be right back. For those topsy-turvy nights, a diaper that suits your baby. Huggy Snug and Dry with all new Leak Lock. Absorbs faster to help stop leaks. Parenthood, chaotically beautiful. Enjoy it. Are you looking for that prescription that the doctor just gave to you and you can't find it at no other pharmacy? Well, the Orange Grove Pharmacy is where you should be. The 
Orange Grove Pharmacy, we carry a wide range of American and European prescriptions and drugstore items. We also do personal care products. We offer friendly services and 24 hours emergency delivery. Charges may apply. We're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., Saturdays, 9 to 1 p.m. Orange Grove Pharmacy, supporting a healthy lifestyle. Hi, and welcome back to A Better Place. So, Aldine, we are at the final segment for today's program. Time has just flown by, and um, you have shared with us quite some valuable information, but you were just about to talk about FBE. FBE, everybody um, protests, say it's not working. FBE, in principle, is very good. Um, the intention is good. What happened by us on St. Martin, and this, I don't know if everybody would like what I say, but we are talking about that you have to have differentiation. Differentiation is nothing new. Um, we were talking about having corners. Now, about 60 years ago, I was in kindergarten, and we had corners, so it is nothing new. There's nothing new about, we didn't call them corners, but everybody knew we had them. There were spaces where you had a lot of what happened on St. And the idea was that you have the kindergarten was merged with the elementary school. So you had like from one to eight, if you count groups. And I'm not dealing with the cycle because I find that is con confusing to me. One to eight. The idea from FBE was that the kindergarten teachers would be trained, upgraded, so that they would be able to teach one uh, uh, year, uh, grade one to six. And the one to six year teachers would be able to teach kindergarten, how to be trained kindergarten. And unfortunately, on St. Martin, I think that the kindergarten teachers were taught about corners. And they, in my mind, didn't have to be touched. They had to be touched to upgrade. And according to me, that's how it happened in Curacao. Okay. Because we still cannot move around. The idea was that you can move around teachers. Teachers on St. Martin stay too long in one class. Mm -hmm. It's, and, and I know when I was teaching at public education, I started moving them around, and I was the worst person out. But I was doing it for the kids. And I, my, my point was that if you are in a classroom for four years or five years, you are on automatic. I don't want any robot teaching my children. And you will be a robot after five years. You know, you have to get out. And I, I mean, even for principals, I, we have to be moving around. It, it widens your mind. It gives you a new incentive. That's what we should do. That's one of my points I think we have to work on. We, I, I, I am not impressed with anybody. I'm not, uh, 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 say, impressed about the education when I hear somebody is staying anywhere for 25 years at the same school. You are, at a certain time, you are on automatic. I've been a principal director of Milton Peters College for 15 years at Taker L. Marvel. Believe you me, if you put me now, it's, it's August, so that's, but if you were to put me in January as a principal there again, I would be able to have my administration up to date and, and ahead because that's how programmed I was. And I'm 15 years, it's like edged in your brain. Right. So, you know, and that's how it is in the class. At a certain time, you're teaching, you, you finish your, your, your method, but the children are left behind. You know, and you have to, and, and, and it causes you to burn out. People say I'm burn out. It's burn out because you're not using your brains. You know, you know that fourth grade from cover yeah. to cover. You but know everything. But the children are new to the fourth grade right. material. And you're not seeing it as new. You know, sometimes it's good to go to the fifth grade with your own class that you had. Hey, then you say, hey, I, I should have done that better because, don't look, I'm, I meet the problem. And you, maybe you should go to the third grade because then you know where they have to be to get a good fourth right. grade. And that's how we have to roll. Mm -hmm. It's not right for teachers to remain in the same class all the time. It does not benefit students. But how, because you said you've also taught in, in the U.S. and, of course, in Holland. 
How does that um, happen for teachers? Do they automatically get upgrading courses on a regular basis, mm -hmm. or are they doing this on their own? Um, you could do it. You could do it on your own. Even in a Dutch system overall, um, they were also late when it comes to upgrading courses. Not as late as Antilles, as or the former Antilles, but they were also late. In 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 the states, you have constantly upgrading. For instance, you get a. Uh, 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 a, a program and within two years you have to have a minimum requirement or else you don't have a job or you get a warning that's it you have to be okay. what is also keeping us back on um, on St. Martin is we have two, uh, teachers with their master's degree as long as they stay in elementary school they don't get paid for their master's degree they, say. they go to the uh, to the secondary school they get paid and that is wrong because you need teachers highly qualified teachers also in elementary school. I remember a gentleman came here and he was a, a doctor in early education, a huge guy. And he used to teach at university, but every three years he went back to teach a year in kindergarten to keep in touch. They couldn't give him a kindergarten salary. Right. You understand? But because of our system, how does payment arrangement mm -hmm. is made, everybody's flying out of, of primary education. And if your primary education is not good, your secondary will not right. be good. If your early education is, is, is wanted, then the rest, that's the foundation. Right. That's the foundation. I also feel, we have a lot to talk about, actually. <laughs> I also feel that when I look at the, at the group one and two, or cycle one year, one and two, I think they're doing so much that they're going too fast for the children. They're not looking at their motor. They want them to write. They want them to read. They want them to write their name. And I'm saying, hold on, people. These people got 30 years school. You know, long ago it was you finish when you're 17, you study when you're 21, you're yeah. done. Nowadays it's not like that. You are in your late 20s, early 30s, and you're still going to be studying. You're still going to be upgrading. Mm -hmm. It's a change, you know. So, um, and I believe that uh, teachers should. Uh, Sometimes we cannot increase the salary, but I think clearly there should be more benefits. There should be more benefits. And um, uh, I, I know we are running yeah, out time. of yes, time, so, but um, we, we have, we, for instance, um, we say a, a teacher is finished at quarter to one. A teacher is not finished at quarter to one. Your job is not only going to teach. Your job is teaching, preparing, dealing with parents, and having your meetings. So, um, and the law said, you know, you're not, you're not paid for five times five hours. You're not paid for 25 hours. You're paid for 39 hours or something. And I believe that you should work those hours. I know they don't like to hear that, but that's my opinion because it will benefit us all. And parents got to be more involved. Parents have vacation. They have a day off. We have problems on our playground. You know what an impact it would make if every day five, you have a school of 300, and five parents can be on the playground to help supervise what is going on? We would not have any more problems in our schools. Because if it is not your father, it's your uncle or your un some, a man who knows you, something is going to happen. Because there's not enough social control in the school. Mm -hmm. And parents, that's where you can help. When you have an excursion, parents should go out with the school. And don't say you don't have any time. Take up on vacation day, you know, and, and volunteer to do somewhat in your school. The best schools are the schools where there's 100% involvement of parents. Parents make the difference. That's where you need your parents. You do not need your parents to help your child do homework. Okay, well, I wanted to ask you to give um, some recommendation that we're out of time. So I'm definitely going to have to bring you back probably I did when, get we're some recommendations. Up, when we're wrapping up um, the whole um, segment of education. We'll bring you back. And then we also plan to have a forum where we're going to be talking to the directors of the Catholic School Board, the Methodist School Board, the St. Peter's Hillside School Board, and probably we can have you on as well as a, a, a former um, principal as well. So definitely we're going to have you back, and then we can get to talk about all what we couldn't talk about today. So thanks once again, Oldine, for having been a guest on A Better Place. And like I mentioned before, we will be having you back. Stay tuned for our next program. I am your host, Angelique Ramoux.